What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about Universal Monsters, The Bride of Frankenstein Lives. A uh, maze that was in Orlando during the HHN Light event, uh, which I saw brief walkthroughs of and whatnot, and it looked phenomenal in Orlando. Uh, not going to put the same standards over here in Hollywood. Not going to do it. I still think it's going to be a very solid maze, but I don't think it's going to be nearly as good as Orlando's. However... Something's better than, we have something better than theirs over there in Orlando. And that's music by Slash. That is right, my dear friends. John Murdy on his personal Twitter account has announced that Slash will be returning to score this maze again. So we will be getting yet another original score, continuing the Universal Monsters saga, and continuing the Slash saga with Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, obviously, this is going to be his fourth year involved with the event. Third year in a row, but fourth year overall. Uh, he first started with the event in 2014, 2013 with Clowns 3D, he, uh, an original maze scored by Slash. Then he came back with Universal Monsters, and then Universal Monsters Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, and now Universal Monsters The Bride of Frankenstein lives. Sammy, what are your thoughts about this maze, man? Well, I just want to say, uh, first and foremost, um, hop off Orlando's uh, blank. Um, I, I think we should just go in with a... Um, no standards and uh, have a good time. Um, I think I think it's gonna deliver. I think it will. Well. I think it will. Because um, in 2018, um, with um, Universal Monsters, arguably probably the best maze there, or at least top three. Yep. Um, last and last time we had HHN in 2019 with Frankenstein means the Wolfman. I would say. Once again, probably top four, top five. I would say Universal Monsters and then that one. Then it was one. a good sequel, but not nearly as good as Universal Monsters. Yeah, that's why I say top four, top yeah. five, not top three. Um, and I would also argue before we go any further that both of our iterations of Universal Monsters have been better than Orlando's. The only thing Orlando I think did better than us is they incorporated more monsters. But in terms of overall design and music and just everything i think hollywood's a a step above there and i think you're going to continue to be a step above because i think we have a great storyline um something to follow um for all of us that have been going from well this will be my second year so i can sound say i'm going for multiple years um, all right <laughs> so i think um i think it's going to be good um, obviously, what we know thus far, as you mentioned, we have music by Slash. It is going to be in the Parisian Square um, because they did already put the somewhat of the facade up. Um, yeah. You know, we we were a lot of us were expecting that would be a book. Um, still is was, a book. Yes, yes, it is still a book. Yeah, we don't know what type of book yet because that's still up for debate. Because um, we were first thinking it was going to be Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Right. Um, I'm hearing rumors that it may be like a like a book you would sign in at a funeral um, that we'll be going into. That would be nice. That'd be um, cool. Um, so we're kind of I'm kind of curious on what that book is going to be. Right. Because uh, there's a lot of different things. Obviously, I think we're moving away from what you can expect from the actual Universal movie, Bride of Frankenstein, um, and we're going to be moving into some original esque version of that just to continue on that storyline because um, for those of you who may not be familiar, but I doubt you're, I doubt that's the case. Obviously we had um, the castle burn um, in the first one. Then we have the monster um, Frankenstein's woman esque the bride there um, who's decapitated and crispy as ever because she is burned. So um, I think that, that brings me to my first question here for you actually is how do you think we're going to move from what we last saw of the bride to what we're going to be seeing here? Because I don't know if we're going to be following the same trailer that or like, that was released, right? Or if it'll be something slightly different. I think we're going off the same trailer. We uh, we are going off. I, I think what had happened was Universal. From what I've read on the uh, the, the Wikipedia for uh, HHN, there's a, there's a special like Wikipedia that highlights all the history of HHN. And for what they wrote on this one, it, it looks like this was a combined collaboration between Hollywood and Orlando where they're going to be doing a similar storyline, but they're going to execute the mazes differently in their own in their own ways. Um, that was the question for me when I when I saw this trailer was as, as far as continuity goes, you know, with the first 
uh, Universal Monsters maze, we saw the bride. She was cut up, but she wasn't burnt. Um, it was before the uh, before Frankenstein's monster pulled the lever and, and fried the whole place. And then in Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, we go back to Doctor Frankenstein's castle, and we are seeing that uh, you know we have Frankenstein's monster and, and the Wolfman. A great scene where you walk in between them and they're facing off. They're on the lab tables. But then if you look in the corner right before you leave that room, you see Bride of Frankenstein all crisp up the post uh, aftermath of Universal Monsters. Going into Universal Monsters, the Bride of Frankenstein lives. Um, what gets me going is, you know, I don't know if someone worked on her while, you know, in between, you know, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman in this maze and, and brought her back to her normal self. Um, because in this one, it's looking like the Bride is in control. The bride is is rebuilding, remaking, bringing back to life uh, Frankenstein's monster, uh, but it looks like she has uh, some foes that are trying to stop that, which is Dracula's bride. So we're gonna see also the brides of Dracula uh, appear in this maze. If you guys seen the trailer, which we we put it in the beginning of this video, um, you know we see the bride of Frankenstein working on Frankenstein's monster, putting in the blood, uh, the the serums and the and the electricity. But as she's about to stab him with the electricity. One of the brides of Dracula comes after her and, and kind of gets her in a really badass chokehold. And I don't know if you've seen the trailer, but, you know, you got her in a chokehold and then she like jabs him with the electricity and she's like in the middle of all the chaos and stuff like it was probably on it. I'm not I'm going to go out and say it. Yeah. One of Universal Studios best, best announcement trailers. Best ever. Trailer. Hands down. Like this was so fucking badass. It gave me so much goosebumps to see that. Um, yeah. So. I, I don't know where we're gonna be continuity wise as far as or, or uh, Hollywood goes because if if you guys if you guys know anything about coast to coast, um, you know Eddie and I always talk about this. Uh, with Universal Monsters out here, we're telling a story. Um, we have a story that's been going on of the Universal Monsters and stuff. I know this is supposed to be a sequel actually. To uh, I was reading, this is going to be uh John Murdy according to John Murdy this house was a sequel to the original 1935 film and was a collaboration with Universal Orlando though both mazes will be different that was one of the trivia things on the uh, Wika, Wikipedia website that they have so this is going to be a sequel to the 1935 film The Bride of Frankenstein um however she's only on the screen for like 10 minutes <laughs> even though the whole film's about her uh it, it is interesting but um i think we're going to pick up where we left off from when we last seen the bride we're going to fill in some gaps there as to what happened with uh, the Dracula Brides, too, because the last time we saw Dracula's Brides was in Universal Monsters, the first maze. Um, so I think we're going to pick up where we left off. These are always fan favorites. This is going to be the second year it's in Parisian Courtyard. Not in a row, but the first year they had it was in Parisian Courtyard. The second This year they're going to have in Parisian Courtyard. Last year was in the back lot. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with this maze. That's a pretty good space to uh, utilize. Obviously, with that first maze, they had that whole graveyard scene, and then you actually went into the actual maze, which was badass. Um, and then the second, the second maze was just that little kind of uh, little camp setup, and then you walked into like a, a yeah, like a, it was like a gypsy talent. camp. A gypsy camp, there you go. That's what that was the word I was looking for. Um, so that was really cool. So we'll see where we enter with this book. I do like the idea that you brought up of from what you've been hearing, it's going to be like a like a mortuary where you sign your name and stuff. That would be really cool. It would also make a lot of sense mm -hmm. with, of course, uh, the bride bringing back Frankenstein's monster would be really cool. So. Uh, I'm excited, man. I, I, I can't wait yeah. to see what they pull off in this one, and I can't wait to see the battle between the Bride of Frankenstein and the Brides of Dracula. Yeah, I know. I definitely think there's going to be some really great conflict right. that we're going to be able to experience, and I think the tension is just going to build and build and build um, to that last scene. Like you, would, like, It's very typical of any maze, but I, I'm very excited for to see how that tension builds, yeah. to see where the story starts when we walk in and where it leaves us. Um, and as you mentioned, it is a terrific trailer, probably one of the best trailers, as you mentioned. I thought Chainsaw Massacre, because I didn't get to talk on this, but I thought Chainsaw Massacre was low bar. I thought that was kind a, of, a better trailer than what they've done in the past, because, you know, usually when you see a lot of these trailers, and you could tell I think Orlando did a lot of these trailers, because this is Orlando-style trailer. But when you see a lot of the trailers, they only ever show, like, clips of the film and then, like, people getting scared. And then, like, clips of previous years that they've done it. This one, they actually had full-blown, like, skits. Like, they had a guy hiding in a closet, Leatherface running in, and then him coming. And it was very authentic to the 1974 film, in my opinion, um, for the Leatherface one. That's something I really didn't get to touch on in, in that video. But um, it, it was really authentic to that 1974 feel of, of, the, of the film. Um, so I'm excited for that as well. But this one, 
hands down, CG or effects, everything, makeup yeah. for something for only like a minute long. This was probably I could say the greatest video I've ever seen Halloween Horror Nights produce for a maze. Yeah, and I know you. I know that we've talked privately on this, but I'll bring it up nonetheless. Um, I think we both disagree on the concept art because you yeah. said you thought it was you thought it was bogus. I, I, was, I actually yeah. thought it was. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I. I for I mean, me, I get that it's not like I would say like out of ten, I'm going to give it like a seven point five eight. Well, I think you're putting it like a five. Yeah, it's it's because for me, if you look at the the previous two years uh, of Universal Monsters, those art. Like, the first year they did it, the art looked fucking phenomenal. Dr Dracula looked scary as shit. Frankenstein looked all, like, burnt and shit. And you had the Wolfman that looked really fucking cool. And then you go to the next year where it was Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, and they recreated that iconic poster that it is of the film. Um, they just kind of enhanced it and made them look more how they looked in the mazes. Um, and then when you kind of look at this one, it looks really cartoony, in my, in my opinion. And it doesn't look as good as it did in the last two years. Where I, it's a cool design, but I'm just not a fan of like the way it looks. It looks very cartoony, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I like that cartoon ass. Um, I would. I think what would have been. I think agreeing with you on this though, I would have topped it. It was if they used the design that they're using and currently in one of the Orlando stores right. for the Bride of Frankenstein that they have a display set up. Um, if they like, like the monster, meaning Frankenstein's monster and the bride. Um, I can I can send you the picture and incorporate it. Yeah. Um, but that, that, I think that that would be a, that would have been ten out of ten for me. Yeah. Um, but I do have one more question before we go for and sure. close out this video: Is do you think this will be the end of the trilogy, or will there be more um, Universal monsters we can expect going forward at Horror Nights? I think this will be the end of the trilogy for Frankenstein, um, because if you if you really paid attention. These two characters, Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster, have been in every adaptation of the Universal Monsters maze. It seems like they were slowly building towards the Bride of Frankenstein, but Frankenstein's monster, I think we'll see him come back. I think he'll I think he's gonna make an appearance in the maze. Like and if it's not in the very beginning or middle, I think it's gonna be I think they're gonna save it for the end. I think that's gonna be like the final showroom, like the big finale where she brings him back to life and he comes up and scares you. Like I could see that I could see that being a really bitchin' ending, in my opinion. But I think this is going to be the end of the Frankenstein trilogy. I think we can move on now to other monsters and highlight other monsters. I'm not saying I'm getting tired of it, because I never get tired of these mazes, because I think they're phenomenal. But I would want to see like we haven't even touched on the creature from the Black Lagoon. And even John Murdy has came out and said in the past that there's a lot of monsters we haven't even touched on. We haven't even gotten to the fifties yet. We haven't even gotten to like the the late mid forties yet. We're still like living in the thirties right now. So there's a lot of monsters to touch on. There's a lot of sequels you can touch on. You can even give the Wolfman his own maze. I would love to see more of like the Wolfman story. You can give uh, an extended maze to Dracula. I more and I and I know a lot of people will agree with me on this. A lot of diehard monster fans. I want to see the creature. I want to see what Murdy can how Murdy can make the creature a little scarier. And, and give his own take on the creature because he did a phenomenal job with these monsters. I want to see what he can do with the creature. And um, just a closing thought here. I think they had a creature show for the longest time at Universal, right? They did. Um, so it's not like they're hurting for items. I mean, I'm sure they have oh, it in dude. some storage. They can just pull it out. Creature is one of Universal's, I think, biggest intellectual properties as far as the monsters go. If you, if you ask anyone, a lot of people really like the creature, and it's one of the big-time, like, merchandise things that you see a lot at the, at the parks and, and everything. You can't, and I always say this, you can't talk about Universal without talking about the monsters. The monsters is what, hands down, put that company on the map. Um, if it wasn't for the monsters, Universal, I think they would still survive, but they wouldn't be nearly as big as they are today. Um Universal created something in the 30s, even as far back as the 20s, with these monsters that literally changed the the, the way of cinema. You know, it really changed the it, it really birthed the the horror genre even more, the monster genre, the creature genre. It, it really brought a whole new meaning to to horror, and this really this paved the way for for things such as fucking Michael Myers. For fucking all these slashes and everything, eventually it birthed that. You know what I mean? So if it wasn't for these monsters, 
I don't think any of these other killers or any of these other horror movies would be where they are today. And I think Creature has a big impact on the monster universe as well. Because if you guys know anything about, you know, the, the history of World War II and whatnot, the 50s was known as the atomic age for monsters. That's why you got, in the 50s, you saw so many monster movies. Godzilla, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, even uh, them, you know, like, you know, the big, the giant ants. With the deformed creatures and stuff, that was the 50s because of the atomic age. Because of the bombings and stuff like that in Japan and whatnot in the, in the World War II. So, I, I, you know, there's a lot they can do with with universal monsters going forward there's way more monsters obviously we know the big five obviously is frankenstein um dracula the wolfman the invisible man and the creature those are the big five right there um and then of course you have the mummy and then the bride of frankenstein and and all the other sub monsters as well uh i, I would say the mummy's the main one too so the big five in a way but uh they got so much they can work with in the future they they can do this for the next 10 years if they wanted to uh, it just depends how many, how much people get tired of it. That's what it is. So, yeah, I agree. I think it just depends on, on uh, what um, what they have in store. Uh, but if they, I think it's it's a a blessing that they have those intellectual properties, uh, and they have a creative mind like Murdy. Yeah. So if they're ever hurting for something, you can always just pull from the bag because there's always a monster that they own that they can use. Or worse comes to worse, we get a Blumhouse maze. <laughs> I don't know how much longer that's. I don't know how much that Come on, going. bro. We know that's the backups. Those are the backups. Those are Plan Bs right there. Come on. If something does, if something falls through, we'll, let's pull from the Plan B file. Yeah, well, that Plan B file may expire. It, no, it may be coming to Universal this year. I don't... Well, I mean, I, I, yeah, it's coming. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but if you like this video, go ahead and drop a like. Um, um, tell us what you think about The Bride of Frankenstein Lives in the comments below, and we'll be happy to have a dialogue back and forth. Yep. Um, and if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. Because we know announcement um, season's here. We're going to be probably dropping videos yeah. like this every single week. Yeah, well, it's every week um, for the next few weeks. We're going to be quite busy, yeah. um, as well as obviously we have Awaken the Spirits coming. So um, I know that there's some great panels coming up. Um, as the yeah, that's one for sure. Um, and there's and there's going to be a whole panel announcement this coming week, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but um, nonetheless, follow us on social media at Twitter at Knights of Horror and at Instagram at The Knights of Horror. You've all been lovely. We look forward to seeing y'all the next video. Peace. See you guys next time.